Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Bricks. I'm Michael Calton Mark, Senior Director of Marketing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And today, we're actually across the street from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the south side of 16th Street here at the IndyCar Series offices because today we're gonna to pay a visit to the IMS Photo Department. You may remember if you've watched Behind the Bricks before that the IMS Photo Department was in the IMS Museum. And uh, after those great renovations at the museum, they moved across the street. And so today, we're gonna pay them a visit, see what they're up to. And so if you would, please join me. So we're inside the IMS photo shop and I'm here with Brenna, our retail manager, and emphasis on retail because our fans can come in here and actually buy photos, do some research. Tell us more about that, Brenna. Yeah, we have an archives of over 10 million photos. Wow dating all the way back from before even the first race when they were first buying the land up to present day, including all the events for IndyCar. And we have lots of fans come in just looking for their favorite driver or if they have their own car out there. And we do lots of research projects for books and movies and TV shows as well. And so fans can, you know, mosey on in here during business hours. When does that occur? We are open Tuesday through Friday 10 to 4 and Saturdays 10 to 2. Excellent. And so whether it's a research project or you just need a great photo of your favorite driver, come on in when you're open. You're able to help. Yes. And folks can do their own research and browsing. Yes. And we are currently working on adding more photos. We only have about, I'd say about 50% are scanned in and the rest are, we are working on digitizing. And that's a great segue because that digitizing project is pretty massive and so we're going to dig into what goes into that digitization project and uh, learn a little bit more so let's head over there and then it just all the way around yeah. man look at this mm -hmm. you've got all of these originals numbered yes and like let's say i was interested in one of these then what happens so um, we have people come in all the time and look here mm -hmm. as we have our little setup and we give them one of these little forms here to fill out based on the page number and the negative number. Okay. We'll go into the vault and grab the it, And you'll find it. And scan it. Wow. Yeah. Actual negative. Yes. Each picture has its own story. You know, their time capsules. Like I look at this and I'm like, look at this old Studebaker pickup. It's crazy. Let alone the race cars. And this is just one of hundreds of books. There he is. That's Jimmy Daywalt in the Sumar Special. He's from my hometown, Wabash, Indiana. His family had a pharmacy, Daywalt Pharmacy. I think as the story goes, this car had trouble qualifying because it was kind of looked like the Batmobile. And then it, they ended up having to take bodywork off of it. Here it is with all the bodywork stripped off of it. Jimmy's still smiling. So he might have made the race, but like the car looks naked. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. At the IMS Photoshop, you can scroll through pages of photos digitally. They have photo books where you can pick out a photo and then they'll go in the back room and find the actual negative and then pull it out for you. And we are at that spot with Joe, who's one of our photographers, also our head archivist. And behind us is the room that has all those negatives, all those photos we've collected from the years. And you're gonna take us inside. It's in a special room. Tell us what's special about it and how we're preserving them. Yeah, so in this room, uh, it's humidity controlled and we keep it pretty cold in there to kind of help uh, preserve the negatives um, as long as we can. Since we moved over here, they've given us some updates to that system. We've got a much bigger room in there now, so we were able to kind of put some more negatives in there and hope to kind of preserve them longer until um, we get all of them digitized. Okay, well let's go in and have a look and then you can tell us a little bit more about how you're systematically going about scanning them in and getting them digitized. Wow. So this is our neg room here, organized by different races, 500, Brickyard, IndyCar Seasons. How many negatives would you estimate are in here? We estimate around four to five million negatives um, and we've got <laughs> somewhere between 100, 125,000 of those digitized now. So just we're a always fraction. on the, yeah. So what's the process of systematically going through and making sure that we can get them scanned in and then accessible uh, digitally? Yeah, so the process starts, you kind of look through the proof books, then you come back here, find that negative, verify that that's the one that you're looking for, and then head over to the scanner and you scan that in. And on the computer, you clean it up, 
crop it however it needs to be cropped, then the picture's ready. So we can do it on demand based off, yes. you know, whatever uh, someone may have an interest in. But then also, are you prioritizing certain years, events, anniversaries, moments, or people? We were kind of trying to scan in a lot of the qualification photos because that's a lot of what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Now we're kind of trying to pick out some popular drivers or moments, what anniversaries are coming up, look for what photos, you know, no one's ever seen. Yeah, and speaking of that, I'm curious to know if, if there's an aha moment or a favorite photo that you've uncovered in this process. Yeah, so it, it's kind of funny because a lot of the stuff you can't just like go, I'm going to go find this photo because it's, it's, there's so much that's happened right. here. A couple years ago, we found the Mario Andretti milk shot, which we never thought that existed. Right. But we got a message last year about Scott Brayton winning the poll at the Indy 500, and there was a small clip on YouTube of him kissing the bricks. So it turns out Scott Brayton did it before anybody else. Before anybody else. But we went through the archive, and there was one frame of it happening, and. Uh, so that's we cool. got that scanned in and that's one of the cooler things we found recently. Absolutely. And the stuff you have digitized, it's fun for us to even get in the, you know, the digital vault and have a look. Just the other day I was combing through um, and found that in 1985, Mickey Mouse was here and was the Grand Marshal of the 500 Festival Parade. And then going back even further uh, in the late 70s, I found that Ronald Reagan had paid a visit and was with Tony Holman and it looked like Tony had let Ronald take the, the wheel of the pace car and maybe do a lap or two around yeah. the track. So just being able to uncover this history and it's just so fascinating. We really appreciate the work that you guys do and uh, are excited about all of the additional photos you're gonna scan in and make accessible to us on staff, but then our fans worldwide. These individuals and then each one's labeled who or what is in that picture. Um, and we've got a lot of these scanned, but not, but not all of them. But right. We've and just got drawers of these. I mean, individual image, Obviously, you've scanned it. You know. And then these are cool because they're, with how big they are, it's really cool to see the amount of detail that's in those. Right. I mean, even as the negative, you can see it when you hold it up to the light. Like, yeah. that's a good photo. But one by one. And <laughs> I mean, you look at this drawer alone. I mean, there's so many photos in here. Yeah. What a, a daunting process. It's almost like a treasure hunt. Like oh, for sure. Right? Like yeah. you look at this and you think, oh, there's so much to scan, but you also want to see what each image is. Yeah. You might uncover gold. And so it probably is motivating, keeps you going. Yeah. A lot of the older photos, we don't know who anybody is. So a lot of times I call up Donald Davidson and <laughs> he used to sit with us and loves going through photos oh, and, and talking through and helping us ID everybody. So we've got ourselves a little light box here. So if we go into the vault and we maybe find what we're looking for, whether that be sort of the, the photo paper negative or um, one of the slides, we can put pop them here, get a good look at them before we scan them in. Yeah, and you can use the loop sometimes too to, to get in there and make sure that the quality is what you're gonna wanna scan. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the nice thing about the slides. You can put them on the light table here and then be sure that what you're looking for is exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neat. Here's where we do our uh, scanning. Brenna and Dylan are gonna show us how it's done. So we take out the negatives that we are working on in the binder and we slide it in here like this. Okay. And you flip it over. And you can do four strips at a time? For this one we can. It depends on your size of negative. So we load them up. And then you've got a couple scanners beside you. We do. We utilize both of them to help the process go faster. Okay. So we can get them sooner. We have our scanning bed here that we like to clean. All right, so we'll scan those in. So we hit the preview button first because we want to make sure that we are scanning in photos that we want to be seen mm -hmm. as in of the race cars, not just of the ground. Okay. Because we have some test shots that the photographers did uh, of the ground to set up their settings. Yeah. As they scan, Dylan will see them pop up in the folder and he will pull them to clean them. Okay. So Dylan, if you would, walk us through maybe a little bit of editing. <laughs> so you've got a picture of Johnny Parsons from 1985. Yeah, I was trying to find one that I And it's, it's actually your grandfather, Dylan. How convenient. The photo, the, the negative was scanned upside down. So we've got a, first of all, we've got to flip it. 
Now that looks pretty good to me from the naked eye. Is there anything else that you see as an editor? Yeah, add a little bit more light. Take some of the blues out. He's got a nice red car there with blue accents. Same as his helmet. Uh-huh. There's that pesky dust, so you're able to remove that. Any other little blemishes you might see. That looks pretty good. So there was how we scanned it in on the right, and then on the left, we're good to go. And then that gets uploaded to the 1985 folder in the vault, and we go to the next one. That's gonna do it for this episode of Behind the Bricks. I hope you've enjoyed venturing into the new IMS Photoshop with me. I certainly learned a lot, loved it. I hope you did too. And remember, this is open to the public, so you can come on out, take a look for yourself, maybe uncover some history that's never been seen before, or maybe uh, take home a gift for a loved one or the, the race fan in your life. Again, they come in all shapes and sizes. You can come in, Brenna, Dylan, Joe, they can help you find the photo you're looking for and uh, hang some history on your wall at home. And remember, if you join us trackside, they have a trackside uh, office as well below the Tower Terrace grandstand so you can see them while cars are on track as well. Again, that's going to do it for Behind the Bricks. I'm Michael Kaltenmark, and we'll see you all again soon at the racing capital of the world. <laughs>